Hey guys and welcome back to Minecraft. Today I want to cover the Monty Hall problem. Monty Hall was a game show host in the mid 1900s, 1960s, 70s, something like that. I don't really know for sure because I never watched it. I'm sure I've seen some reruns on uh, TV when I was a kid, uh, quite possibly, but this is a really popular problem because it's because of the mathematics, the obscurity, it's counterintuitive. So I've watched just a number file and a few other uh, YouTube channels. If you haven't, go look. There's a lot of cool channels. Vsauce, number file, uh, ASAP Science. A lot of them have been on the front page. They're cool informational videos, and it's really, really fun way to learn obscure facts, and sometimes more important ones as well. So door number one, door number two, door number three. Monty Hall, just imagine him here. Uh, pick your door. In this case, we're going to pick door number one. I already know what's behind these. Here's a sheep. So we pick door number one. Monty Hall gives us a second chance. He's going to show us door number two, and it's going to be a bad prize. It's going to be another sheep. So we don't know what we... Hi, little guy. We don't know what we picked at first. So it's 50-50 as to whether the diamond block's in there, right? Whoop. Assuming we don't know... There's two doors left. He showed us a bad one. Do we switch or stay? Now, I'm not sure if the designers of the show knew about this because it really is counterintuitive. It still looks like 50-50. But if you switch, in this case, yes, we win. Awesome. If we stay, we lose. But you might think it doesn't matter because these are all going to be random. Well, let's do this again. Let's pick door number two. Okay, Monty Hall walks over, shows us door number one. He's never going to show us door number three. And it's this fact that makes it always better to switch. It changes the odds. Now, it doesn't mean we'll win every time. But if we pick door number one, he's going to show us door number two. If we pick door number two, he's going to show us door number one. And if, he picks number th if we pick number three, he's going to show us either one. It's not going to matter. If we switch in every scenario, we're going to win by picking door number one. We're going to win by picking door number two. We are going to lose by picking door number three. Now, a lot of people like to pick theirs and stay, which they would win once. Doesn't matter where these all, all are, they're going to win one out of three. They have a 33% chance of winning. So pick and stay, you win. Pick and stay, you lose. Pick and stay, you lose. That's why you always want to switch. There's People have explained this several other ways. This is the simplest, I think, for people to understand. I hope so. Don't think about the odds. Think about picking the bad item. If you pick the bad item, the zoink prize, the sheep, the goat, whatever, you're going to win the car because he's always going to show you the bad, the other bad prize. You will always win the car. Now, if you go into this problem, into this game show. Imagine yourself on the floor. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself on the floor. Monty Hall, a middle-aged white man, standing in front of you, offering you three doors. A car is behind one of them. If you pick a door, he's going to show you the Zoink Prize. Switch, and you will win. Two-thirds of the time. Because there's two bad ones. And if you switch, you're always going to get the car. That's how it works. It's more complicated mathematics behind it if you really want to write it down on paper. But go in there, aim for the bad prize because there's two of them, and switch and win the car. Now, if you get, if you happen to pick the car, you're unlucky. You, there's a one in third chance you will pick the car. There's a two in three chance you will pick the sheep. You know, it's, it's that simple. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, have a nice day.